Hello everybody and welcome to this awesome knots replay cast with yours truly slow wolf today We're gonna to be taking a look at devmon's replay uh, We are going to be on a Guillaume. It is an almost 30 minute long match. Let's go ahead and introduce everybody in the game And here we are on a Guillaume. as everybody decides to land uh, This map is important because it's, it's, it, it, the reason why this map is cool is because it is very gank heavy So we'll see how these two lineups match up there Sarah Warby playing your Raylan on the red team Nikki Chili playing your Skoldier and Pinkamena playing your Ayla who's going into rage already uh, An early start to the action here Devmon playing your Nariachi Mad Fat playing your Rocco and then finally EGGI playing your Durple, a character that we don't see super often here. I think he meant to siege up and go down, to be honest with you there, but uh, not the, what happened here. Devmon looking to put out some damage here with the Weedlings, and uh, yeah, let's get started as far as this match is concerned, shall we? Oh, out comes uh, the Durple drop. It's not going to do anything, though. No nuke, so what's, uh, what's it going to do? Not much. As far as abilities bought, everyone went for base abilities, except the, oh, well, with a couple of exceptions. Uh, Pink Amana going in with the Rage. Every time I do this, I get killed. Uh, so I don't understand how he survived. That seems unfair. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as far as items bought, we got range and basic abilities uh, on the Raylance. The range for her snipe is what I meant here. Basic abilities on everyone else on the red team. On the blue team, the only one outside of basic abilities was Badge and Cop Gun for the Rocco. So going for an Aerocentric build and not working on Vengeance quite yet as uh, the Vengeance maybe just isn't strong enough to guarantee getting early on in the game and that's that's a pretty fair way of putting it i mean rocco doesn't necessarily need vengeance early on i just i really like it because it allows me to get away fairly easily by just turning it on and then shooting the other direction it's perfectly easy to kite when you don't suffer a downside for uh for doing for doing your left click now this upgrade is far more on the offensive side of things Aiming to do more of that harassment and able to hit multiple people now with that arrow, which is quite a lot of damage, to be honest with you. This Raylan is putting out a lot of damage. 68 DPS for her team. Although it's not exactly a lot, but if you look at it on the other team, Rocco's putting out 800, uh, sorry, 800, wow. Uh, 89, almost 90 uh, DPS on a regular basis here. And when, every time he lands those arrows, he goes up at least a couple of damage per second. It's a fair amount of harassment. It's a lot of damage. Now, everybody on both teams seems to have roughly the same power level. We decided to go with Solar Spent uh, on our middle column here today just to see relative power level as far as Solar is concerned uh, rather than current Solar to see whether or not they can go home and spend. Because Solar that you have yet to spend isn't actually all that important. It's like, oh, look, you have a 800 Solar to spend. It's nice. But it does literally nothing until you spend it. So, Nick, Lick, uh, Nick I'm just going to call him Nick. Nick's going to have to teleport on home because he's quite low on HP and... Well, that's fine. I mean, as a Skoldier, you take damage sometimes. A lot of times, actually. And he's going to go for double regen to go ahead and stop that. I think that's a pretty good upgrade. Uh, especially against the Gnaw. The double regen will probably save him a couple of times. Out comes the throw. On to Mad Fat. Mad Fat going to take a lot of punching damage. But it's not going to be enough to net a kill. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, he manages to land the snipe. But at what cost? He barely manages to survive. The poison not going to be enough to get the kill here. Out comes a kill onto the Durple. Well played by Pink Kamena, uh, managing to pick that up. Sarah Warby looking for maybe another kill onto that Devmon Nariachi, but it's not going to end up happening. He'll teleport to safety, and uh, that will be that. A two for nothing pickoff in favor of the red team. So two, zero, four minutes in. Things are looking pretty good right now for the red team. Uh, Raylan picking up boots. Rocco picking up boots. No, nah, picking up boots. All very good things. Sarah Warby needs to be careful. He needs to dodge the next arrow that comes his way. Because there's going to be need to be an arrow that hits a 3, 2, 1. If he's not careful, not going to end up happening. Pinka Man are going to get stuck and nuked. Uh, will go down. That will be the first kill of the game for the blue team. Well played by them. Nick going to come in with an earthquake. But it's not going to be uh, able to land on anybody. And he'll just clear out the wave more or less. And just leave 5 solar on the ground. So, you know, that's important. Out comes the arrow and a nuke. It's going to do a lot of damage to both the Skoldier and the and the, and, uh, the Raylan, there we go, that's what I meant to say. Um, this is looking a little interesting for the red team, and I would be probably a little afraid of things right now, as there's a fairly large amount of harassment coming out. Uh, out of the Gnaw, out of the Durple, out of the Rocco. The Rocco is going to be a pain in the ass, just because he's got a bad cop gun, and a lot of good Rocco players these days are going for that, plus the damage. It means you're hitting with, for a fair amount of damage, and a large enough AoE, and with an attack that can land... 
Not relatively easily, but against the Skoldier, definitely relatively easy. Mad Fat gonna take a throw. He's gonna take a lot of punches. He's almost dead, but he's just barely... Nope, he's not gonna survive. A well-placed Evil Eye gonna pick up the kill there. EGGI gonna pick up the kill into Sarah Warby, however. And now Nick is gonna eat the snare. He's gonna end up getting picked off there. A well-placed snare gonna be very good for him. Evil Eye plus Rage gonna pick up the kill back, however. And that's gonna be a two-for-two two exchange. Pink and Mana gonna pick up the majority of those kills. Now three... And uh, at least a little bit. I'm sure that he's taken a couple of deaths to the face already, as is. Yeah, at one. There we go. Not a big deal, really, as far as Solar is concerned. But still, the fact that he's got three kills is fantastic for him. It means he's now managed to pick up Rage Drawings. A couple of other upgrades have been picked up as well. Time Rift Damage coming up for the Seru Warby Raylan. Oily Spray on Bronze going to come up for the Skoldier. So going for more of that uh, punch kind of lockdown build. we got Nuke Damage. we got Nuke Speed coming out for Durple. And... Cockfight Spurs coming out for the Rocco. So going for that left click damage on the Rocco, which isn't a bad thing, especially against the Skoldier. Keeps people away. But if you're going to do that left click damage build, I would highly recommend picking up Vengeance just because it allows you to run away that much easier with a much more damaging arrow. Sarah Warby coming in the wrong place at the wrong time, but it's just the, the team coordination just wasn't quite there yet. Um, never mind. Didn't matter. Sarah Warby going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time anyway. Yeah, 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 again. And I get picked up. So... There's that. But Pink Commander going to pick up a kill onto the Durple, who was completely unable to stop the Aela from just absolutely devouring him alive. So that's going to be that. 5-4, to four, currently in favor of the red team. 6 minutes, 30 seconds into this game. It's now level 6 to level 5, but not by too much. Out comes the punches. Nothing going to happen there. He's trying to throw, but at what cost? He takes so much damage. He's looking for a creep here on the right side. As a desperation move, he will find it. But now he's completely cornered. He is likely to die here. The arrow's going to miss, but the other left click arrows... Uh, yeah, he's going down. Nice and easy. Mad Fat gonna pick up the kill. Piece of cake. Out comes an arrow. It's gonna completely miss horribly, uh, as it was not fully charged and will not travel more than a few meters. Uh, Derp will gonna just drop through here, launch the nuke up, and push the wave a little bit. So, you know, why not? The nuke wasn't gonna hit anything else. That was a, that was a reasonable play, you know, if you have nothing else to hit, you might as well hit some droids. Out comes the snipe. It's gonna hit all three members of the blue team. So, you know, really efficient. This uh, Raylan pickup is going to be very effective against Durple, as any good time rift will be able to do a lot of damage against him. Out comes a snipe. Uh, it's going to do a decent amount to start pushing out this bottom wave. But at what cost? He took a lot of poison damage and some weedlings as well. He's going to be quite low. He's going to have to run around and start picking up some other HP sources. EGGI looking at the ground, deciding that he's going to look at the solar instead of pick it up, and then pick it up slowly afterwards. Staying true to his name. Out comes the snare, just a little bit too slow to be able to trap Nick there. And that'll be that. Now their Ayla's coming in, do, did a lot of rage damage, but with that poison, it could be dangerous if an arrow lands. No arrow lands here today, and the Ayla will be totally fine. Now Nick is looking for something to do here. Pink Amena, gonna land the eye, gonna kill Devmon. Devmon very, very dead, unfortunately. Pink Amena gonna get picked up by the Durple in this turret mode on the flip side, however. And it is now 6-6, six to six, level 7-7, seven to seven, very even at the moment. Snipe gonna come out, Sarah Warby looking for something, but not gonna hit a dang thing. Out comes the Time Rift, Mad Fat gonna jump right into it, but uh, because of the speed of the bounce pad, he'll be totally fine. He'll only take like maybe a second of damage, and that's it. Which isn't a lot when you think about it. Now, looking at the relative power level of the knots, everybody's uh, kind of Wang Chung here. Out comes uh, another stun punch. What I mean by that... Is that everybody's kind of... Wow! Sarah Warby taking a very fast nuke to the face. Uh, that's going to be rough. Nick going to pick up a kill with his Fist of Fury. Mad Fat going to pick up a kill. Back onto Pink Amena. Throw coming out. Out comes a couple of stun punches. And Skoldier in the wrong spot. And he kind of put himself there with that throw, to be honest with you. And he'll get picked off two for one in favor of the blue team. Now things are looking pretty good for them. As I was saying before, uh, relative power level of the knots was pretty good and pretty close, actually, considering the amount of solar spent. Uh, only maybe an upgrade or two behind, so not a big deal. The Rockos managed to pick up the split coin arrows, which is a very, very frustrating uh, upgrade to have to go up against. That piercing effectively extends the range of arrows by a lot and allows him to do a lot more damage. And later on, if he decides to go for the cooldown reduction, Every time his left click hits, uh, he'll be able to toss out more precision arrows more often later on, and that'll be very tough to deal with as well. EGGI going in there with the nuke. It's going to completely miss entirely, unfortunately. Nick going to take a little bit of damage. Pink and Mana also very low. He is going to land the evil eye onto EGGI. EGGI just barely going to drop on down and do a surprise. 
Kind of juke, but Pinkamena doesn't care. Out comes the Rage, and that'll be a kill. Now, Mad Fat looking for a kill onto this. Oh, onto Sarah Warby, and is going to find it with the arrow. Devmon's Poison going to pick up the last hit onto Nick there. Uh, that arrow managing to bring both of them within death range, at least either for Poison or for getting the last hit. So, very well done by Mad Fat, getting that, landing that arrow. Pinkamena now needs to be very careful, as she's the only one left to really defend, and is quite low. I mean, not so much that she can't survive whatever is being thrown out here, but uh, you still need to be careful. She does have two ranks in Rubber Band Ball, which means that so long as she's in her Rage mode, she's going to drop little, uh, you know, little little things on the ground that she can pick up later on to pick up some HP, which will be very nice. She also has the Sonic Listening Device, which is actually really good for her, just because if she picks up any creeps at all, she'll be able to get a lot of HP back. However, not going to save her there. She's going to make a huge mistake and kill herself, uh, but that was mostly damage from other people. Mad Fat now in a bad spot, takes a stun punch. Is going to start jumping up. Those boots proving to be an exceptional pickup uh, for the Rocco. On the downside uh, of things, Devmon going to pick up a kill onto the bottom turret. And it's now two turrets to nothing for the blue team. So things are looking very much firmly in their court. They're two levels ahead. Well, you know, level and a quarter. They are 11 to 8. Things are looking good for blue. Sarah Warby in a bit of a rough spot. Needs to be careful. Will eat an arrow and call it a day there. Pinkman going to eat a nuke. Needs to be careful not eating the snare, which is exactly what Skoldier did instead. She'll pick up some of the... Yep, she'll be fine, actually. She picks up some of her little blood spatters on the ground and manages to get a bunch of her HP back. Nick is just barely going to teleport out of there alive. A very sneaky teleport. Well done, sir. Now, as far as damage goes, the Ayla is not two for two for Angry Rage Drawings. Not yet. She does have the bike. She has the rubber band ball. She's got regen. She's got a lot of survivability. Um, but she doesn't quite have the damage yet. So we'll see how this turns out. It's a very interesting build. I haven't seen anything of its like before. Pink Amanda going in there, in and out of rage constantly, which is an important skill to have as an Ayla. You definitely want to be in and out of rage more often than you want to be uh, just kind of sitting in one or the other. Mad Fat going to pick up a kill into Sarah Warby with those left clicks. Very, very frightening amount of damage, to be honest with you. Coupled with his uh, triple arrow upgrade, Evil Eye going to land nice and strong. Going to help pick up the kill there as Pink Amanda manages to get the last hit with the Rage. Now, Nick is in a bad spot. He needs to land some good punches. He needs to not get bit here. If he gets, he's, Oh, he managed to survive. He's got the speed. He's not got enough speed. He needs to keep running. Is he going to be able to get away? I'm not so sure. He eats a snare. He eats a couple of bites. He's pretty done. Look at him go. Uh, he's super low. He's not going to be able to teleport home because of that poison. Is he actually going to survive this? Regen, going to be enough. He's going to keep him alive. Uh, we're going to follow this guy instead for a little bit. He's quite low, but he's going to end up surviving here. Nick Chill managing to defy expectations and come out of that one alive. Good job, him. Uh, Assassin Flag's coming up for Rocco, meaning he'll now, as long as he's in Vengeance, uh, start going incredibly fast for a very long period of time. That'll allow him to chase and to uh, kite very, very easily. I love that upgrade on him, personally. I think it's fantastic. Out comes the Snipe. It's not going to do too much that's super effective there. Out comes an arrow. It's going to end up hitting the Skoldier, uh, but not much else. EGGI taking a lot of damage. Out comes the nuke as well. That e that Durple knows how to like launch the nuke and then come out of siege at exactly the right time that the he's moving while the nuke is out. So that's that's some really good Durple play coming out here by EGGI. It's, it's really, really nice. Now the blue team is a full level ahead. They're 12 to 9. It's... it's Looking pretty good for them, but it's certainly not in the bag by any stretch. They need to be a little bit careful of this Ayla. If she manages to pick up enough uh, HP and everything else, she can definitely tear into quite a few of these other characters. Ayla quite low. Needs to be careful around Devmon. Naw isn't exactly a hard counter to Ayla, but it's pretty close as far as I'm concerned. Between uh, the, all the poison damage making it very difficult uh, to, to deal with... Uh, as it will continue to deal damage even outside of rage and everything else. It, it's... It, like, I honestly feel like Naw is a good counter to Ayla. Just because of that alone. But on top of that, the slow that you can get on the spit and everything else makes it very hard. On top of that, he has... Like, Naw has no means of dealing with an Ayla while she's in rage. So, um... No, other way around. Sorry, Ayla has no means of dealing with a Naw once she's in rage. Like, she rages, okay, that's great. But, uh... You know, she can only do so much. EGDI gonna pick up a kill onto Pink there. Very well played. Out comes the turret. It's going to miss. Devmon looking to maybe chase down Nick here. He's trying to find the kill. Will not find it. Nick Chill will be able to pick up uh, the two creeps there. So you'll be quite healthy after all. 
thanks to that and his heal punch and the regen he has. He's actually a very tanky Scoldier, all things considered. And down comes Pinkamena. The Ayla is back, baby, and has managed to pick up two ranks in Baby Curry Mammoth. Not exactly would have been my first pick, but there it is. Has it. It's nice. It'll, it'll do the trick against the snares for sure, so hopefully won't die to the Durple as much as now there's a 40% reduction. What's 40? Is it 40% for second rank in it? 25 per rank. It's 25 per rank. So 50% reduction in terms of snare duration, silence duration, all that stuff. Devmon taking a lot of damage. Out comes the Rage. It's going to be enough. But on the flip side, will get picked off by her own huge mistake come out of damage. So that's going to be that. Now the Scoldier taking some fairly consistent damage from the Rocco. But uh, the Assassin Flag is not going to be enough on their own to be able to pick up a kill. So that's unfortunate. But then the breaks with the Assassin Flag. Sometimes you do really well and then you get completely misplaced by a Scoldier. That's one of the benefits of playing Scoldier is that if you are playing against people that are not paying quite enough attention to their position, you can really change where things are and who's playing what and how everything works out. Pinkamena gonna go in, get her rage off, and get right back into the fight as quickly as possible. Out comes a punch, out comes some rage. Not gonna land any kills anytime soon, it seems. Our red team's still a level behind. They, they need to find a seam here, find a crack, find a person that they can kind of collapse upon. Out comes a throw onto the Nod down below. Not gonna really matter as Pinkamena is gonna do a good chunk of damage to herself, himself. Nick Chill taking a ton of damage from the poison, from the Wheelings, and it's going to be enough. Devmon going to pick up the last hit there with a tick off of the poison spit at the very least. Now, Pink Mena and Sarah Warby need to be careful. Skullier's having a hard time this game, largely because of snares, arrows, like all the, the effect of bullet hell that he has to go through. It's, it's frightening when you think about it, just how many things someone would have to dodge as, as a Skullier, which is hard. Because you're big, you're fat, you don't have as much HP as a clunk on top of that. Uh, and you have to deal with all these things all at once while you try to charge in. It's not easy. So it's almost like Skolier needs to find maybe another way to kind of initiate for his team instead of just using throws. Maybe, maybe uh, using long range snare quakes or something like that might help. But uh, it's always difficult to say in a situation like this. And uh, we'll see what happens. Sarah Warby almost going to eat a nuke, but the Durple will not be there enough to be able to do that. Raylan taking a decent amount of damage, but will survive. Out comes the Evil Eye. It will hit uh, somebody, but not to as great effect as it could. Pink Amena gonna just r rage on out of there. No problem. Out comes the Evil Eye. Devmon quite low. Mad Fat gonna pick up Nick Lick on the back side there. And is gonna now start pushing out this bottom area. Doing maybe a little bit of damage to Pink before deciding to back off. Does not want to get caught out. And that's a fair way to do things. He's got seven kills. And I wouldn't want to die either. I mean, he's only died four times. Uh, it's a fair amount, to be honest with you, but, you know, it's not the worst in the game by any stretch, and if he's on a killing spree, you don't want to give up a killing spree uh, for no good reason at all. Pink going to manage to pick up Mad Fat regardless, and uh, that's going to be another kill for the red team, starting to bring it back a tiny bit. They're still level behind. They are about five kills behind as well. Pink and Mad are taking a ton of damage off of this poison, like Devmon, and, and that, that poison damage and everything else, that's going to be frightening. Out comes the throw, and to what effect? Nick Chill, really? Deathmon taking a lot of damage. He's not going to survive. Out comes the Rage uh, with the last hit there. Pink Amanda going to pick up another kill for herself. Now seeing 11 and 1. Uh, but unfortunately gets dropped upon by this Durple with the nuke. And uh, that'll be another kill for the Durple. Out comes an arrow. They do 626 damage of pop now. And with the a if, like the AoE hits anything else, it is super worth it. That's uh, 1,200 damage. Uh, whenever you landed on multiple people at this time. EGGI going to toss out a nuke, but at what cost? He's so low. Mad Fat also quite low. The Durple low enough that it's like if only there was a Rocco on the red team. But no dice. They're both going to survive just fine. Blue team in a really good spot. They still have both their front turrets. Despite the fact that this game is kind of going back and forth and there's lots of action anyway. Rocco going to come in from behind on uh, Nick Chill. Nick Lick. Sorry, Nick Lick. But uh, Lick, Nick Lick does not care. Nick Lick uh, will just walk on off. EGI gonna go ahead and go into Durple mode and has now wasted all of his cooldowns. Ayla wanted to go in there and pick up a kill, but is not going to find it. Devmon will kill Saru Warby with some well placed poison and everything else. Devmon will then get a double kill, picking up Nicklick there on the back side. So now things are looking very good for the blue team. They can start going in and with this three on one advantage, start pushing in the bottom. If there's anybody who can deal with a situation like this, you'd think it'd be an Ayla, but Ayla's having a hard time getting in on these fights as well as anybody would. To be honest with you. 
she's a melee character and she does take damage despite what uh, her rage would have you believe. It's not like she's just invulnerable to everything while she's enraged, so she needs to be careful uh, while she's uh, fighting these guys. And these guys have a lot of means of keeping her out of fights. It's it's a terrifying amount of poke and harass and just everything you would not want to have to deal with as a melee character, honestly. Now comes the evil eye, and that will be that. EGG, I won't find anything else here. Pardon me. Well placed sniper gonna manage to hit the Rocco. Devmon taking some rage damage. Rocco looking to maybe uh, pick up some HP as well, and uh, that'll be that. So snipe does do a lot of damage. There is that going on for it, but at the moment that's all it's really got going on for it. Uh, it's not. It hasn't done a lot in a long time. Raylan's sitting on one kill at the moment, which isn't exactly a lot, uh, and on uh, six deaths. Honestly, Pinkamana is going as hard as possible, trying to carry the team, but. Things are not super good for the red team because Skoldier is having a difficult time getting in. Raylan, I just feel like, hasn't had a lot of chances to really do anything. It's, it seems like it's done very little. Mad Fat going to take a lot of damage, but it's not enough. His kiting is very real. The Rage is going to manage to pick up the kill there, however. Evil Eye and Rage almost going to kill off the Gnaw, but the Gnaw is going to survive. And uh, that will be very good for them. EGGI has also killed off Sarah Warby on the backside. A very good drop going to pick up that last hit. And this will be a good time for the blue team to push, as it is a 2v1 situation. This is still a split pushable situation. This is what you want uh, as an aggressive team. EGGI is just refusing to push, though, and break his invis. He's, he's looking for a gank opportunity rather than anything else. And if the Skoldier, if Nicklick is going to play at all reasonably, he is not going to give that opportunity to the blue team. It is now v 3v2. Uh, in favor of the blue team. They've managed to take up this bottom turret a little while ago, and nothing really has come out of it quite yet. They do need this top turret to really start abusing their position here. Pankamana taking a ton of damage. Uh, well, at least a little bit of damage. He'll he'll be fine after a bit anyway, so not a big deal. There we go. There's the poison. There's the amplify. That's what we want out of the snaw. You definitely want to be getting those kinds of upgrades out because on, with the... Let's see slowing effect and the amplify damage like the spit does so much to to really hurt Nela. It, it's it's scary that it's been there since the beginning of the game pink man has not had really the chance to take off baby curry mammoth was definitely an excellent pickup though uh in that light pink man is taking a ton of damage will go down to devmon and his bites not proving once again why he's kind of the ayla killer if you're in the right team makeup and in this case definitely is zero warby uh trying to run away from this incredibly angry looking rocco who's tossed down a lot of damage Will not get killed. Uh, the, like the Rocket will not pick up a kill on Sarah Warby there. But, you know, that's what's going to happen on occasion. Wow. The Weaving Army plus everything else means that Devmon is going to put out an astounding amount of damage onto this top turret. Uh, before finally being forced off. So now the top turret is down to a third. If there's one thing that Nock can do a surprising amount of damage to, it's turrets. If he's given any room to kind of put down a Weaving Army that can last maybe one or two droid waves it can do a stupid amount of extra push uh onto those turrets it's frightening really vengeance is going to come out pink amanda taking a ton of damage will not end up dying as it barely survives now mad fat gonna need to be a little bit careful he will bounce away from nicklick uh nicklick at a reasonable amount of hp so i don't think he'll end up dying here sarah warby Needs to be careful. Takes a slow. Takes an amplified damage. EGGI going to take some rage to the face as well. And Pinkamana going to pick up the kill there. Very well done. Rage going to come out. Not going to be enough. Evil Eye going to miss. And is going to pick up some HP. Now much healthier than she once was. After picking up 701 HP. Like, that Sonic Radar listening device does do quite a lot. While she's raging around the room. The Na is going to be able to teleport out. So no kill for our Ayla here today. Uh, that'll be that. I like to just notice the HP totals here at this stage of the game. 2300 for Arako is quite a lot. Uh, he does have both of his ranks in pills, or is it just one rank in pills right now? Just looks, it seems like just one rank in pills. Uh, and he's sitting at a pretty high amount of HP. Skoldier is sitting at 2400. He has no HP upgrades, and he won't have the ability to pick up any. So he's only got 100 more HP than the Rocco does, and a fraction of the damage, which... I guess it says a lot about the builds that they are currently going for here today. Out come the Vengeance Arrows. Nicklick gonna try to find a throw. Finds it. Out comes a Stun Punch with his oily stun 
Uh, punch combo. Nicklick needs to be careful. He took some damage there and will end up going down to Devmon's Poison, despite the fact that the nuke damage is what ended up doing the burst there. Pinkamena going in from underneath the level. and Well, sorry, underneath where the droids were walking and will kill them off with Rage, which is a fantastic little way to safely farm a lane if you can manage it. Out comes some more Rage. Blue team needs to be careful. Wow. 200 damage cats. Proven to be way too much. The Catling gun build. Uh, gonna force the Raylan to go back home. Pink of Mana gonna eat a spit and a slow. He's gonna have to be safe for a little bit as he just, you know, accepts the fact that he will not get a kill that way. Derp will take a lot of damage off of the evil eye and a little bit of rage, but he will not end up going down. He will survive. Currently 16 to 25 in favor of the blue team. Only one level difference despite all this. Uh, Mad Fat gonna go in, gonna try to find this kill onto Nick Lick. Will not. Uh, and that will be the end of that particular bout of harassment. Out comes the Vengeance. Sarah Warby needs to be careful. The arrow is going to miss. And uh, that will be the end of that extra, you know, of, the, of that little extrication. Out comes the throw. Never mind. Devon trying to run away. Will get killed by the Rage. The Snipe helping to do a little bit of damage there and to help secure that kill. So well done by the Red Team. They managed to pick up another one for nothing kill. Evil Eye going to come out. EGGI needs to be careful. The Rage is going to be enough. He will get the kill. He will get killed in return, however, if he's, as he's too close to turret and flew too close to the sun. Out comes the throw. Out comes a couple of stun punches. Not going to be enough. A well-placed arrow going to pick up the kill into Nicklick. It's going to be a two-for-two two exchange. This Rocco playing out of his mind to be able to negate the advantage that the red team had. And will go back on home. Picks up a second rank in HP and is now sitting at a pretty amount of HP as well. Sarah Warby sitting at 2,132 max HP. Uh, and that's with no pills upgrades. Will there be pills upgrades in the future? Maybe. There is the possibility. He still has the upgrade room, which is fantastic. 2,533 coming out from Mad Fat here. Lots of HP for a Rocco, honestly. It's, it's impressive. Out comes the Vengeance. Out comes some more arrows. Lots of damage. Lots of HP. Uh, Pink and Mana. Needs to be careful with his amount of HP, as he only has so much. Uh, Skullier has 2,600, even without the HP upgrades. Out comes the throw. It's not going to really matter all that much, though, as it doesn't throw into a turret. On the downside, uh, I mean the bottom lane, Sarah Warby going to pick up a good snipe kill. Nice evil eye kill coming out of Pink Amanda. That's going to be a two for nothing pickoff. The red team now needs to push forward and start taking some towers. They have yet to pick up one of them, which is a frightening concept if you think about it. Pink Amanda sitting at 16 and 10. And it's just the gnaw left. They're going to have to deal with these droids on the core, however, as they do a lot of damage to buildings. You really can't leave droids on the core. It, it's just, it does way too much. Sarah Warby going to go ahead and start keep, and start uh, pushing out this lane just that much faster with the snipe. And now the red team is pushing down this top turret as fast as possible. Coupled with the fearsome fury of Skuldier's iron fists of fer, which is French for iron. So I said uh, iron twice. How about them apples? Uh, they will manage to take out that top turret. So that's now at least not going to be a flawless victory for the blue team if they do end up winning this. Sticky Cop's mustache coming out from Mad Fat there. He's going for a heavy left click build on his auto attack. It's effectively land arrow, go nuts with left click, and then uh, have a good time. Does not need to land the arrow all the time. Does not need to have maximum synergy. Just needs to do... Enough damage that he can kill people within the span of one Sticky Cop's moustache. Will he be able to do so? I think he's got the capacity for it. He does do a lot of damage, especially in an AoE, if anybody says to go in for a team fight. But we'll see if that ends up happening in the next couple of minutes. To be honest with you, things are looking like people are playing very safe. 700 damage arrows means a lot of damage. Nick Lick gonna take a ton of damage. He'll end up going down to Devmon and his poisons. Now it's just the two other members of the red team against the entirety of the blue team, which is not a situation you want to be in as uh, these red team members. They are already behind, and the instant that you put them behind and then give them a person dis a personnel disadvantage is the instant you have a bad time. Out comes the nuke. It's going to do a lot of damage. Now Pink Amanda going in hard. going to find at least one kill. Out comes the evil eye. It's going to miss, and Devmon will pick up a yet another kill onto Pink Amanda. So things looking really good for this blue team. It is currently 2v1. The snipe has been missed. The rift misses all that Seru Darby has this blaster. It does a fair amount. It's 132 per bullet. But uh, you need to be careful. Especially against with all this poison. Devmon going to pick up a nice and easy kill onto Seru Darby. And that will be the strongest defender for the red team. Absolutely gone. And this core is down to half. It's down to zero. 
Blue team managing to grab the lead fairly early and then carry it on. Let's go ahead and see how close this game was. Again, the easiest way to see this is to go over to your total solar tab. Uh, we don't necessarily need to grab that. We need to grab a. Uh, we can grab uh, this graph if you don't mind my. Uh, if you don't mind me grabbing it, please. Thank you. There we go. All right. So the easiest way to see whether or not a game was close is to take a look at the graphs and uh, see where the total solar was. Until we see a total experience graph at some point, that will uh, continue to be the case. So as far as total solar goes, things were looking really close for about the first eight minutes to then pass that blue, grabbed a lead, and they just kind of took it, stuck with it, and kept going with it. They never really gave up that advantage throughout the entire time. Was this a snowball? Absolutely not. This was a close game, but it was definitely Blue's game to lose as they had uh, pretty much a, like better builds and everything else going for them. Uh, to see this, let's take a look at the item builds. Uh, Raylan went for some Time Rift heavy stuff to deal with the Durple early on, but it never really picked up and never ended up really doing very much. So I feel like this might have been a, a wasted opportunity and maybe going for the wrong build early on, or... I, I, don't, I don't know. The, the Raylan might not have been the problem here, but I honestly felt like Time Rift and Snipe just didn't do enough all the time. Skullier had a hard time going into these fights. I really don't blame him. This might have been a game for Fist Bump uh, to deal with all the projectiles he was having a hard time with. But uh, I think going for regen was a good move. It definitely saved him a lot of time. And uh, Rubber Ducky plus Oily Bronze is always a fun play, a fun build. But I don't think it's necessary in this case. Maybe going for a, a pure damage throw build would have been helpful against certain people. The Ayla, I cannot really fault for picking up the upgrades that she did. However, she definitely could have used more max HP. She was currently sitting on a grand total amount of HP of 2752, I think. No, that's just uh, whoever I was sitting and staring at. But uh, yeah, Ayla sitting at whatever HP she was at was not enough to survive these fights. So that might have had something to do with it as well. Finally, the team play coming out of blue was really on top of things. Snares would come out, the Durple would kill them, uh, and then they would move forward. His 200 damage Catling Gun was, was terrifying to behold. Uh, Rocco was definitely on point with his arrows. Badger Cop Gun ran out of the gate. Uh, and went straight into that aggressive harassing kind of build, which turned into a carry late game with Sticky Cop's mustache. Uh, then the Na, obviously very, very strong against the Ayla, especially early game with the slow, the amplified damage, and then the poison damage, doing a huge number onto Ayla's. Again, that dot damage does a lot against Ayla's because they can't rage and get the shield against damage over time all the time. Um, as long as they are outside of rage, they will take full damage from poison, where a burst damage ability wouldn't necessarily do it, so... Uh, that would somewhat compensate, I think, for the amount of uh, healing over time that other people managed to get. The Ayla did manage to get double regen, so did the Skoldier to deal with the uh, with the poison on Gnaw, but Raylan only got one rank in regen, and at the very end of the game. So, uh, I don't think Sarah Warby ended up actually dying too much to the poison so much as it was to other characters, but there you have it. I honestly feel like the, the builds on blue were better overall. Uh, they made a lot of sense. And they were played better. Whereas with red, they were a little bit confused, a little bit scattered, and not well thought out ahead of time. Boots here, I don't think were the right move. And I think that maybe picking up pills would have been a, would have been a sounder decision. Or replacing baby curry mammoth with pills instead. So that way she had the HP to survive these fights. Once again, Skoldier probably maybe should have gone for a more burst, uh, burst heavy build. So that way they could have... Uh, started going for more damage and maybe gone for fist bump to deal with all the incoming projectiles of which there are very great many and then finally Raylan I don't know I just felt like there wasn't much of an uh, of an impact there but well played from the blue team well done all told uh, by them and again especially you know good good job out of Devmon on his gnaw and the Rocco and the Durple like all three played very very well I'm very happy to have seen this game and I thought it was a lot of fun to watch I hope you guys thought it was a lot of fun to watch too, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to have your replays cast, you can definitely do that. I do that now. So you can go ahead and send those replays to slowwolfgame at gmail.com. So S-L-O-W-W-O-L-F-G-A-M-E at gmail.com, and I will take a look at it and cast it, and it'll be fun for everybody. You get your game cast. I get to cast it on my channel. Everybody has a good hoot and holler over it, and uh, yeah, that's, that's fun for everyone. So one more time, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I know I sure did. I'll see you guys in the next video.